Hi, I'm Natalie and I'm with Viking based here in Sydney. Uh, today we're going to be walking around our beautiful Sydney Harbour, taking in some historic sites and actually I've got Greg here with me today. Hi Greg. Hi Nat, how are you going? Really well, how are you? I'm good. So today we're going to be walking around the rocks, doing a little bit of a historical tour. Um, where do you think we should start? Well, the rocks has got so much great Australian European history being uh, the first European settlement. Uh, so we'll start with a couple of the earliest parts of, of the rocks, the earliest, oldest buildings, uh, and then we're going to head to some pubs. Excellent. All right. Okay, well, let's get started. All right. Right, so Greg, we've literally walked only probably, what, 20 metres away and we walked past the Museum of Contemporary Art and I think, I'm not a botanist, but I think, did I spot a Wallamai pine? You did spot a Wallamai pine, Excellent. yeah. Uh, yeah, a Wallamai pine uh, known as the dinosaur tree. Yep. Uh, basically, a, uh, a, from the time of the dinosaurs, 65 million years ago, yes, thought man. to have been uh, extinct, uh, but they were found in the Blue Mountains around about 30 years ago. Amazing. And now they've been brought here and they've been planted a few places uh, nice. around, around Australia. Oh, and so it's, great. it's well protected though, there's a nice big sturdy fence around it. It is, it is still Australia, so people yeah. can't be trusted all the time, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, alright, so where are we now? What's significant about where we've stopped? Uh, well, the building just uh, behind us is Cabman's Cottage. Uh, it's the oldest building in the Rocks, built wow. in 1815. The Rocks is old for uh, Australians and maybe Americans as well. Not um, for the Europeans. Europeans, yeah. look, I've had people from Egypt on our tours and they've been very oh. impressed. <laughs> with the age of our place, yeah. uh, of our buildings, right? Yeah. Uh, John uh, Cadman was a coxswain. Uh, he's the guy who looks after the ships in the harbour. Okay. He's the last guy to live here, so they named it Cadman's Cottage after him. Ah, right. uh, it used to be right on the water, but this is all reclaimed land uh, around the quay, so it allows uh, the ships to come into this part of Sydney Harbour, which is, which is very yeah. important for, yeah, for, uh, yeah. for you guys. <laughs> The building's uh, thought to be designed by Francis Greenway. Uh, he's pretty much everybody's favourite convict architect. Uh, he come, He's a, a, an architect in Britain, convicted of forgery, comes to, is sent to Australia, uh, and while he's here, Governor Macquarie, whose name you see all throughout Sydney, true, uh, true. says, convict, you're good at drawing buildings, draw us some buildings. Oh wow! Uh, and he's okay. thought to have designed this building. He, okay. he does get better. This was an early one, right? He hasn't... It's not not bad for a first attempt. Well, look, you know, um, but he ends up going on to uh, design a lot of other buildings around the colony. Gets pardoned for all of his good work, oh, fantastic. Uh, and that's what happens to lots of convicts. They come here at a time when we're building a nation, uh, and there's a lot of opportunities. And the people that uh, complete their sentence, and even soldiers, they stay and they stay here, and they're basically the people who. Um, who populated Found Australia. Australia, yeah. yeah, wow. Okay, so it all ends well, really. It, in the end. it does. And Fantastic. I mean, look, to see more of the places that these guys, well, that these people, well, where they first lived yeah. uh, is the Rocks area, uh, and that's where we're going to head to uh, next. Fantastic. So, up all the right. stairs, though. All right, no, that's all good. Lead the way. Great. There's so many hidden little surprises around here, Greg. Um, so tell me, what's this? Uh, this is a, a mural about how things progressed in the rocks. Right. Right. Uh, you'll see, before Europeans arrived, everything was colourful. The British arrived, everything turned black and white. <laughs> then it went back into colour. And then according to this, it went back to black and white. Right, right. okay. <laughs> but it's about how things progressed throughout the rocks. Some of the buildings uh, that we see during the tour are listed on here. Cadman's Cottage that we saw before. Oh, it's is, just there. Well, it's in the middle of a field, but it... Yeah, okay. It's not in the middle of a field. <laughs> Uh, there is a lovely one that we will talk a, a, a bit about as well at the top, the windmill on top of the hill. Can you guess what the hill was called then? Windmill Hill? Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, okay, right. right. It was a fort for, uh, there, there's an observatory now and the hill's called... Observatory Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're pretty okay. good at naming stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really. But uh, I think we go head through another couple of laneways down this way. Okay. I think we'll head to the pub. All right, lead on. So, now nah, if you're ready, pub number one. Let's do Endeavour it. Tap rooms. Let's Fantastic, go. let's go. So, now nah, we're at the Endeavour Tap Rooms. Uh, they do have a small little brewery uh, attached here. Uh, so, some of the beers that they're brewing are on the premises are oh, here. Oh, fantastic. Uh, but it's all Australian independent uh, nice. beer. Uh, 
Got a couple of choices. He's got uh, quite a lot of beer choices. Yes. Uh, there is some ginger beer uh, as well. They have cider. You can choose wine uh, as well. Uh, no judgment. No, no, no. Look, if, if I'm in a brewer's place, I need to choose a brew. Um, I might go a, a Breaker Specific Ale. Excellent choice. All right, we'll get one of those. Thanks, mate. All right, well, cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. And this one was brewed here? Yeah, so there's a little brewery uh, down here. So, um, yeah, it's as local and as fresh as you can get. Nice. So why do you include the Endeavour Tap Rooms on your tour? What's special about this place? Uh, well, the Endeavour Tap Rooms uh, is originally called uh, the King's Head. And it's King's Head Hotel. And ah. pubs and hotels in Australia is very important. And that's something a bit confusing what people find when they arrive in Australia, that all pubs are hotels. hotels. And that's basically because in the early colony uh, in this uh, particular area, um, and most others, uh, to uh, be able to serve alcohol, you had to have a hotel license. So not anyone could serve alcohol. Oh, right. You had to be a hotel. Okay. The minimum requirements to be a hotel, though, were two beds and you had to serve food. So right. if you okay. had a bunk bed and you put a bread roll next to the beer, that counts. Done. Right? Okay, done deal. So anything could be a hotel. Uh, right. The laws have changed. You no longer have to have accommodation to be uh -huh. able to serve alcohol. Yeah. But historically, if you were a hotel, you can still keep the name hotel even if you don't have accommodation. And right. Australians, we seem to understand it, but people from other countries, they come here and they're like, I'm looking for the hotel. I'm like, this is a hotel. This is a pub. No, I'm looking for the hotel. It goes back and, and forth. And it's, it's one of those things, I've never really thought about it, but you're right, so many of our pubs have the word hotel in them, and that, yeah. oh, that's a really good explanation. So, I mean, in the Rocks area, before there was anywhere else to stay, any of the large hotel chains, you would stay in a small, um, in a small hotel, which is what pubs are now. These, this is the accommodation okay. uh, area of this uh, particular hotel, um, but uh, no longer has accommodation. Uh, so this one, originally called uh, the King's Head, um, and it went through a couple of different names. Being so close to uh, being so close to the port, um, people would uh, for a long time, um, you know, the uh, general population couldn't read, so they would look at the they look at the pub and they'd say a picture of the king's head, oh. and they're like, all right, well, um, I know who's going to potentially be in this pub. Some other ones might have a famous soldier on it or a famous sailor, or they oh. might have, um, you know. This place called the Bricklayer's Arms or things like that. Right. It's got tools for that particular industry there, so people go. Um, people might not be able to read what it says on the side of the pub, but they recognise the tools of their trade or they recognise the person, and they're like, I know my people. If I'm a bricklayer looking for work or something like that. Oh, that's that, amazing. I, um, I would go into that pub and I'd be able to potentially find work and find people who are going to be friendly to me. Oh, that's fascinating. I had no idea. That's yeah. really interesting. Okay. Yeah, we will see. We might see it on another couple of uh, that we see around uh, today. Because mm -hmm. after we finish this beer, mm -hmm. we've cooled down a little bit. We've got a couple more laneways, a bit more of the nefarious history of this part of the Rocks area. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we've got some uh, well, an iconic Australian snack uh, to try at the next pub with a, with a drink. All right. Now I'm interested. Now I'm interested. All right. Well, look. Cheers again. Thank you so much and uh, let's drink up and get going. So now we bring you down this little laneway here. This laneway is uh, called the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal. Suez Canal. S-U-E-Z right. or Z, right? right. Uh, like the one in Egypt, right. but it's actually Suez is in S-E-W-E-R-S as in Suez Sewage Canal. Ah, uh, right. We never used to have plumbing in the early colony, so buckets of the good stuff out in the street. Out in the street. Uh, if it rained, the Suez Canal was not a good place. Uh, to, to be, stand. yeah, understandable. But, but these little laneways, and pretty much the rocks in general, uh, used to be ruled by street gangs. Uh, they were called larrikin gangs. Okay. Uh, it, it's back when a time when people used to bare knuckle box. Think of, think of people right. fighting like this. Yeah, yeah. Or like, okay. or like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have, have you ever seen the movie Gangs of New York? Yes. Yeah, think of yes. it. Yes, okay. Think of a cheaper Australian version of right. that movie. Right? <laughs> okay. Uh, Uglier right. Leonardo DiCaprio. Nice, like maybe, nice scene setting. Maybe nice. if we want to. But these, these uh, gangs would fight amongst each other. The most infamous gang here was called the Rocks Push, right. and they would fight with other gangs. Uh, there was another gang here called the Straw Hat Push. Right. Uh, everybody in that gang wore a straw hat. Sounds vicious. It was very scary. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. scary. And what are they fighting for? Uh, they're, they're pretty much fighting for 
<laughs> for the sake of it, for a lot right, of the time. Okay. But uh, what else they would do is they would prey on uh, the tourists of the area. Uh, and back oh, then, tourism okay. was just sailors. Okay. So sailors would come in off ships, they come to the rocks, and they just get a little bit more drunk. Yeah, right. right. And they'd be okay. walking along a street like George Street, out the front of the laneway, they'd meet a female member of one of the rocks, uh, and she'd be, she'd be advertising. Right, uh, okay. The sailor would go with the young lady into the laneway, and here he'd meet all the other members uh, right, of the okay. gang, and they would beat him up, take his boots, take his money. Nice. Doesn't happen okay. anymore in the yeah, world, yeah. very safe. Right? Okay, yeah. um, but you might still see the favourite weapon for these gangs getting around. Uh, their favourite weapon was uh, a sock full of wet sand. Right. A sock full of wet sand. Well, I know, okay. It doesn't sound that scary, but a no. sock is easy to find. Yeah, okay. Sand goes in, yeah. you compact it tightly. Heavy, yeah. You tie a knot in the so uh, above, the sock, uh, in, above the sand in the sock, swing it around, whack it in the head, police come around looking for a blunt weapon used in an assault, oh. uh, undo the knot in the sock, empty the sand in the street, walk a bit further away, clearly getting dressed in the street. Wow. Nothing okay. seen here apart from my yeah. wet and sandy sock. Okay. Right? Wet and sandy sock. If, if you see anybody walk around with a wet sock, avoid them. Right, they look weird. suspicious, right, yeah. yeah. Okay. If you get yeah. hit in the head with a wet sock, welcome. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. It's no. Um, and we've got look, we've got a couple more lane ways to go. Okay. Um, but we're gonna work our way up to uh, the next pub, which Excellent. No socks, no sand, but beer uh, and kangaroo. Excellent, bring it on. Cheers again. Cheers. So now we're at the Australian Hotel. Uh, we, uh, it's a, Australian Hotel is a pub, and it does have accommodation. Is a okay, hotel. right? Uh, still, a true hotel. Yeah, true hotel. Um, but it's a, got a typical Australian uh, pub layout, and that's one of the reasons that we come here. Okay. So there's kind of three sort of bars, three main sections to the pub. So the first one where we ordered, yeah. uh, that's the public bar. And the public bar used to be just the working man's bar. There'd be no carpet, sawdust on the floor, one right. or two types of beers to choose from, horse racing or dog racing playing on the radio, and only working men were allowed in that bar. Right. Uh, and then we walked down the steps and we walked down through the saloon bar. Yes. So the saloon bar's here, it's got its own entry off the street. Yeah. Uh, saloon bar's got carpet, cushions on the seats. You could um, get a wine it's in the, the comfy bar. bar. Well, yeah, the beer was more expensive because you could get wine in that bar. Right. And then something that you noticed. Well, yeah, the ladies' parlor. Yeah. So this pub has the ladies' parlor with its own entry off the street. Uh, the ladies' parlor is a small little room where uh, women could go and they could have a, a shandy and a cigarette and talk about the ironing. <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a place where women could go and have a drink yeah uh, because up until 1955 in this state in yep. other states even later uh, it was illegal for women to be served in the public bar so they weren't allowed in either the no. saloon they were allowed in the saloon bar they, right. and the ladies parlor but, but they weren't allowed the in the public bar right. if you're a woman and you were in the pub and you were not escorted you're pretty much thought to be a prostitute so the right. ladies parlor is okay. a place where women could go and have a drink yep. and escape any of that social stigma okay uh, and something that as an australian woman you would have noticed in the pub um, it gets brought up almost every time I go to the pub. Uh, ladies notice how far away the women's toilets are, yes. usually in the pub. Yes. And that's to do with where they traditionally were allowed. So oh. in this pub, the ladies, uh, the men's toilets are next to the men's bar where we okay. started. Yeah. And the ladies' toilets are in between the um, saloon bar and yep. the uh, ladies' parlour. Ah. Oh. Perfect timing, guys. Fantastic. That's the kangaroo pizza. If you guys awesome. need any cutlery or plates, just there in the bar. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so guys. much. Yeah, oh, that looks good. <laughs> but you finish what you were saying first, though. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, women were only allowed in those certain uh, parts of the pub. And if a woman wanted to go to the bathroom, if she had to go through the public bar, be right. seen in the wrong place, yeah, she'd okay. have her reputation besmirched. So, the right. toilets are, the ladies' toilets okay. are always. It's sexist, but it's it historically sense, sexist. Right. So. Yeah, okay, right, it makes sense. I won't hold it against anybody. But well, we can't quite change it now. It's no, historic. no, I know. But no. what we can do is can try some kangaroo pizza. Is get stuck pizza. into this pizza. Yeah. All right. So it's okay. pepper, pepper kangaroo uh, with a bit of capsicum, but that would be a pepper for people from other countries. Might right. not know what a capsicum yes. is. Yes. Here we go. Mm. Yeah, that's tasty. Yeah, some people say similar to similar to venison. Um, it's got a game kind it's of taste. It's got a little bit here. of a gamey taste, yeah.
now we've finished that delicious kangaroo pizza. Yeah, it was good. All right. We're still going to talk a little bit about the pub. Okay. Uh, and a, a feature of Australian pubs that you would see and people notice, uh, but though not particularly on this one, they used to have them, uh, are tiles on the front of pubs. Like yes. Bathroom tiles. Yep. There used to be tiles here, but they've been taken down. Okay. Uh, and you start seeing tiles on the front of pubs in Australia um, just at the end of World War One or 1920s uh, is where most of it starts to happen. And the reason for that is uh, pubs used to close early in Australia. We didn't outlaw alcohol like they did in America, mm -hmm. um, but we had our pubs close early as our kind of prohibition. So instead of... Uh, uh, pubs closing at 11 or 12, most uh, pubs closed at 6, or all pubs closed at 6 p.m. 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. Okay. Most men finish work at 5. Right. So you had one, one hour, hour to get to the pub and drink as much as you possibly could. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have to go home to your family sober. Yeah, okay. Terrible times. Yeah, terrible. Terrible times. Yeah, hard times. So it was called the 6 o'clock swill, right? Okay. And it was only for men. It wasn't for women, but basically you would go to the pub and drink as much as you could in that hour. And if you were drinking, you were drinking with your mates, right? You're speed drinking, just smashing yeah. them down. It, because it was so um, full in the pub, it was so you'd be seven, eight, nine, ten deep, you couldn't get to the bar, so you would have to shout your order to the barman so that you could get your order in. Uh. So you'd say, five beers, bartender, whatever, something like that. Um, and they uh, they would get a hose and or, or they'd bring you the beer out. out. Um, and so in Australia now, when you order a beer, a round of beers is called a shout. It's, or it's called your a shout, shout. Yeah. right? And the shout comes from uh, that time. Ah. But what was happening at that time is you know you're speed drinking and shouting when it's your turn to buy a round of beers. Um, if you if you feel like you need to go to the toilet, you're holding it in. If you feel it's right. sick, you're, you're holding, holding it in. It in. But at six o'clock everybody the pub closes and everybody else in the pub who's been doing the exact same thing they all need to leave and they all need to relieve themselves at the easiest I see convenience where, i had a feeling it was heading this direction which is where the tiles come on in. the wall on the outside yeah of the pub. okay the next morning the publicans are scrubbing the bricks down hosing them down so much one publican decides to put tiles just like have around the toilet on the outside of the pub protect the walls make them easy to clean right so that's why we have hey, tiles on the front of pubs must. in australia needs must we don't know where the toilet is if you ever go to a pub and there's tiles on the inside, you know it was a rough place. Right, yeah, okay. <laughs> now, if you didn't know why the rocks is called the rocks, hopefully you can see some rocks. Fairly self-explanatory at this yeah. point, yeah. So this is the Argyle Cut. The rocks is a rocky escarpment that heads north-south. The Argyle Cut is a cut straight through east-west uh, through that rocky escarpment and it's a way of getting goods from one part of the rocks into the city faster. Uh, they use convict labour to cut a hole through the rocks uh, but they only gave the convicts pickaxes and shovels and said cut a hole through the rocks. Oh wow, shovels. okay. Didn't, didn't go particularly fast. No, no. Uh, someone had to invent dynamite before they could blow a hole through. Yeah. And then they expanded it because this is the overpass onto the harbour bridge now. Yeah. So they drilled down and blew out and you can see that in those lines. Oh, and then uh, there. Most of the sandstone from the cut goes to the bottom of the hill and fills in circular key. If you walk around the key, you'll see these little gold discs that say shoreline 1788, yes. shoreline 1844. It's all reclaimed land, oh. uh, like where we were at Cabman's before, yep. and it's all from the cut. A little bit of sandstone from the cut goes to the building of this church, uh, just up here. It's called the Garrison Church. It's the church for the soldiers of the area. And then the rest of the sandstone goes to the building of another church for the sailors. Uh, it's more, it's, more second church on Sunday. Okay. <laughs> First church is church. Is church. Second church is pub. Is, is the pub, yes. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, right. And uh, there's two of them here, and they both claim to be the oldest pub uh, in Sydney. Both built from sandstone uh, from here. And both named after famous British military men. Right. We're going to see one of them Excellent. just now. Fantastic. Okay, so, thank you. We've now arrived at our final pub, the Lord Nelson, and I think these are house brewed, yeah? Of course, yes. Okay. Uh, so you've got a beer that you'd know. Yes, this is my husband's favourite beer, the Three Sheets. Yep. yep. Uh, three Sheets, uh, named after the sailor's term for being drunk, Three Sheets to three the Wind. Three Sheets to the Wind. Uh, and this one here is the Blood. 
uh, and it's Nelson's blood and it's about the story, uh, or comes from the story of the Battle of Trafalgar where Nelson uh, famously won but died at the battle yep. uh, and to transport his body back to England they decided to put it in a barrel of rum yep. uh, to preserve him, preserve oh, his body. Nice. Uh, when it arrives back in England the barrel's only half full of rum oh. and they say that the sailors had uh, drunk the rum out of the barrel and were drinking Nelson's, Nelson's blood. Nelson's blood, right. And so that's where the name comes well, from. Well I love the a, stories. Well this is a, a, a typical Australian pale ale and this one is uh, a porter. Um, okay. Uh, British, they're British style ales, but the, the ingredients use are Australian Australia, ingredients. Yep. Uh, all brewed here, so there's a, a small brewery down below. They have some fermenters here that you can still see in the pub. Yep. They do bottle and can somewhere else, but everything you try here is made here. Right. And they've been making their own beers for 36, 37 years. They're legends of the craft beer industry. Yeah. Uh, and the beer's as fresh as you can get. And you can't come to the Lord Nelson and, and have a beer and not have some plowmans as this, well. It looks amazing. So this is made fresh every day uh, mm -hmm. in between lunch and dinner service. They have uh, some uh, damper, or what mm -hmm. we would call damper, but soda bread in other countries, yep. using grains uh, from the brewery um, to make the bread. And then uh, you've got some cheddar cheese, you've got pickles, pickled eggs, uh, pickled onions, uh, some chili jam, and then some English mustard with horseradish. Um, so it gives it a real kick. All right, should we get stuck in? Yeah, for sure. All right, fantastic. So thank you, Greg. Uh, I've had the most amazing time today. Even as a born and bred Sydney cider, I've learnt so much. I do feel like I've eaten and drunk my way around historical Sydney, but I've learnt so much. And I know that our guests uh, who do stop on our ocean itineraries that visit Australia and who come to Sydney would enjoy this just as much as I did on their shore excursion. So look, thank you again for your time. Yeah, thanks, Nat. Thanks for coming along. I love showing Sydney ciders. I love showing you around this part of Sydney and uh, I really look forward to showing all the international guests the same part of Sydney uh, when they're here next.